because limestone doesn't hold water, sandstone doesn't hold water, shale doesn't hold water. But this was the last part that was underwater. This was a part of the, of, of the Gulf of Mexico. And you have, and you go down there and you've got gravel, you've got sand, and you've got things like that will hold water. And so you can drill a well. And uh, so that's, that is where that came from. And uh, that is all covered with silt. Now, uh, let me give you a little lesson on where the silt come from and, and then we can go forward from there. 10,000 years ago, this was all a, a, a mountain of ice. We have been warming for 10,000 years. Now we've accelerated the last, year, last 100 years or so, but we have been warming for 10,000 years. And ice came all the way down to here. And uh, so you had a big bulldozer, a mountain of ice that was slowly moving. And it cut the hills, it filled up the valleys, cut the hills, filled up the valleys. It leveled off a lot of this, a lot of this, a lot of this, a lot. That's the reason that's level, it's because that bulldozer went through and leveled it down. And then it started melting. And when it melted, huge torrents of water came out of that ice. And it flowed down through here and evidently it carried a tremendous amount of silt and soil and things like that that was pushed in front of that thing. You can stay here and you can cross the river. Does anybody know where Wycliffe, Kentucky is? You can cross the river at Wycliffe, Kentucky and you drive 60 miles a pure floodplain from, those, from that deposits. Pure floodplain to po Poplar Bluff, Missouri. You get down here to West Memphis, Tennessee, and you can drive about 100 miles west of your flood, flood plain. Now, that dried up sometime. There were times when it was really dry. And uh, the wind blew a lot of that stuff, and the winds was coming from the west, and they blew it to the east. And my mother lived through the Depression. She lived through the dust storms of Oklahoma. And she tells me that on a really bad dust storm, that uh, when they got through with the storm, uh, they would use a little scoop shovel to start cleaning out the floors uh, of the house. And they would wind up with a, with a broom. You couldn't see your hand hardly in front of you uh, when that wind blew. And I would say that that wind was the same way here many, many times. You can stand on the bluff of Hickman, Kentucky, and you look over into Missouri, and you're 200 feet above Missouri, and that's pure silt. That was blown in. Pure silt was blown in to Kentucky, 200 feet of pure silt. And uh, the sand won't blow. It kind of trickles along because you can actually see it. It's a pretty good sized particle. And the clay is so small with so many surfaces that you can actually, uh, uh, you can, it, it will hold together so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, it didn't blow much either. There was sun that blew. That's probably about a gram of soil, probably more than a gram of soil. But if that were pure clay, that's probably more like it. If that were pure clay, that'd be enough surface area to cover a football field. That's that much surface area in clay. It's a tremendous amount of surface area. So anyway, we, so we got pretty well just pure silt. And so the purchase got silt, these guys got silt, we got silt here in that part of the Kentucky. Now when that, when that was coming down, when that ice was coming down, all the rivers in Kentucky run north. Every, every river in Kentucky runs north. Every river jumps in the Ohio River. But when that ice came down, uh, Basically, it couldn't, it, 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 it dammed it up. You, uh, and we had a lot of lakes formed, and we had a lot of erosion in those lakes. You go to, you go to Madisonville, and you go, you go up a little ways into 139, and you cut across to Owensboro, and you go through Calhoun. Has anybody taken that road that goes yeah. from there? You see those big old flat areas out there? Mm -hmm. uh, you can come out of Owensboro in 431 and go to Central City, and there's a lot of flat areas there. Those are old lake beds. And that's where the erosion came in. That's where it was stopped up and then we formed a lot of lakes. And uh, those are old lake beds of erosion that came from that stuff that was washed out in, in those areas there. 
Uh, if you leave, uh, if you go to Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and you take 65 to Louisville, and right after you get out of Elizabethtown on 65, you see this huge cut that's got this uh, limestone rock all the way to the top. And then you drive about 10 miles or so, and it begins to level out to some extent, and you see all these little mounds, these real steep hills, real steep hills. Those are the knobs. And uh, you get around Shepherdsville, and you see a lot of level stuff out there, and you wonder, why, why aren't they farming that? I mean, that stuff looks good, you know? The reason not farming is because it's shale, and it's clay it makes up the shale. And that stuff is sticky and hard to farm and really, really difficult to farm. And so that's where we have a, a lot of our clay is, is in, that, in that shale. So basically, we have been influenced not only by the rock that we have, but by the, by the, but by the wind blowing part of, uh, of what we have. This is that part of Kentucky right here uh, that we're standing in that has limestones, limestone rock. And the, the soil formed from limestone rock uh, has, got, has got clay in it, and uh, it drains well. Uh, it's a really good soil. It's some of the best soil we have. The only problem is it runs a little bit short of water uh, during, the, during the summertime. Starts up here, uh, actually kind of in Livingston County, swings down through here. There's a lot of farming that goes through here. It swings on up here, goes in the Louisville area. Uh, uh, Shelbyville, uh, it's got a lot of it. Shelbyville area has a lot of it. Good soils, rolling soils, uh, but it's got a clay layer down in it, and that's that's the limiting factor. What did we say was blown in here? What kind of what what was the texture blown in here? What was it? Does anybody know what holds more water than anything else? Okay. Does anybody know what? Which one holds more water that's available to the plant than anything else? Silt. Silt is the best. Clay holds more water, but you can't get it all out. And so it's not as good as silt. And sand holds about half of what silt will hold. Clay holds about 75% uh, that's available to water of what silt will hold. Silt's the best. You can't get any better than silt. Uh, a silt loam, and so we were fortunate to have a silt loam. Now, a hundred years ago, 150 years ago, 200 years ago, the soil was up here about here. This was all silt for one, at least a foot and probably more like two feet on top here. Really good soil. What happened to it? Why? What work plow? Now, if you, lose, if, you, if, you, if you lose a dime's width of soil a year, do you notice that? You don't notice it. If you put a hundred years of dime together, you, you got about a foot of soil. Um, so we start out with this much silt. Now we're down to this much silt loam. Uh, really good soil here, but it's on a little side slope. It's been farmed. Uh, uh, it was it was farmed a long, long time. In fact, until until we got no till, we couldn't stop erosion. It was impossible to stop erosion. We could slow it down. We could do rotations with pastures and things like that, but we couldn't stop erosion. It was impossible to stop erosion. This right here is. Uh, is silt loam, and that's what's left of that mantle that we started with. Uh, that's about six to eight inches. It probably was 18 inches to two feet at one time. Uh, if we go up there on that level land or down in that lower part, it'll be quite a bit heavier. This is where most of all the action takes place, is right here. How deep does the nutrients that you add how deep do they go? Where, where, how, um, not nitrogen, but phosphorus and potassium. How deep? Three or four. So this is everything, everything you put is right there. 
if you chisel the plow, you don't change the depth much more than if you just broadcast it on top and no till. You don't change the depth much. Chisel just moves the soil to the side. It doesn't turn it under. If you put something on top and you disc six inches deep, how deep will, you, will that material you put on top go? You discing six inches deep, you're putting something on top. Was it three? Three inches. So the way we farm today, even if you use a chisel plow and a disc, you're still three or four inches, right? So this, so most of your action is right here. Seventy-five percent of the water that that you that crop's going to get is in the top twelve inches. It's going to come to the top twelve inches. Now a real important part comes below that, but that's a, the top twelve inches. Is six. So it's really important to have a good soil really here at the top, and we're lucky here that we have a silt loam surface that was blown in here. This right here, this, sil this silty clay loam, uh, this grades into heavier clay, and you start, you start getting soils that are, uh, are, that are derived strictly from limestone, you're gonna have more clays. And we, got, we increase the clay as we go here from a, sil a silty clay loam to uh, down here to a clay. Now, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but uh, you've got roots right here, right here, you see those, and one right here. So we get, we've got rooting all the way down to here. Can, I don't know, I can't hardly see it. Can y'all see rooting in here? But right down here, where, where the clay starts, right down in there, where it's really heavy clay, you don't hardly see any roots. And uh, the heavier the clay, the more difficult the rooting. So even though you've got some soil down there, it's difficult to get. I got some water down there, it's difficult to get it out. So let's talk water storage here just a minute, all right? Uh, I went in here and measured this yesterday from here, and assuming that you can get root down in there, and you got about th three, you got about three feet of water. Let's say that was pure silt, and it's not. But let's say that was pure silt, which is the best you can have at three feet. You can hold about two tenths of an inch of usable water per inch of soil, two tenths. So in 10 inches, and really in this case, probably a foot, you can hold two inches of water that's usable to the plant. So three feet gives you how much? Six inches, right? Six inches. Now, does anybody know how much water a corn plant uses once it canopies on a daily basis? Quarter inch. Quarter inch. So how much would that be in a month? Seven and a half to seven and three quarters an inch. Let's say that you've got three, three feet of soil here and you've got six inches and you're gonna use, let's just say seven and a half. That's, a, that's an inch and a half deficit, isn't it? So you're gonna depend on some water. So you got, you got six inches stored, you've got to get the rainfalls to hold it up. Now let's just talk about from what's happened the last three weeks. It's been 20 days since we had the last significant rainfall. 20 days times a quarter inch is how many inches? Five inches. At the best, if we started with a full profile here, we can hold six, right? Well, more than likely, we had had some growth and we didn't get it completely charged, recharged back up. So about four or five days ago, uh, we went from real green, real green grass here to, to, to dying grass. We had about two weeks of stored water. That's all you got. So basically, uh, we need, if we could get a soil that's four feet deep, five feet deep, our insurance goes up. If we get it two feet deep, the insurance goes down. Uh, so basically on this soil right here, we, we can't, it's gonna be difficult for us to get year in, year out a full crop. We're just gonna be, because of the clay layer, because of the depth of the soil. If you use that quarter inch a day, you can pretty well calculate when you're gonna run out of water. When we, when we had our last rainfall, I pretty well calculated for our two foot soils and our two and a half foot soils that we would run out at the end of last week.
and that's pretty well. We started running out. You can calculate it. You can see it. If, if you keep track of it, you can calculate it. So you know pretty well when to irrigate. You pretty well know what you need to do to change it. And if you know the depth, so you've got to know the depth of your soil, and you've got to know how much you use on a daily basis. If you know those two things, it, it will really make a difference in, on you being able to manage a crop. If you just know those two things. You drive down here south on 139 mm -hmm. towards Cadiz. And when you drive south at 139 on Cadiz, you're going through this soil right here, Pembroke Crier. And you're going like this. You got an undulating topography. And as we talked about before, you've got a lot of erosion that's taking place over those years. And uh, in those low places where, the, where you've got those kind of uh, old duck's nest uh, areas where, you know, old sinkholes that's filled up or what you want to call it, the, the, the topsoil is 40 inches plus. You'll never run out of water. You don't have to have irrigation, you'll never run out of water. On the side slope, you've probably got about that much topsoil and you've probably got two feet to the clay. So two feet times a quarter, of, uh, two tenths of an inch per, per foot would be four inches. That's all you got. I guarantee you all those are, are, are twisted, every one of them. And then on the top, you've got eight inches of topsoil and you've probably got three feet or more and so you're going to, it, it's to, to the clay layer where you, where you don't hardly get any. We, we, if you got down this pit like I did yesterday and follow these roots down, they stop right here, right here where this clay layer gets really thick, where it gets almost all clay. That's where they stop. And that's the, that's the area that you're looking for to determine that depth. Here's clay. Here's silt loam. We talked about two tenths per inch or two inches per for 10 inches or about two inches per foot here. You only got about an inch and a half here if you got 10 inches to a foot. Sands, you don't have much at all. It plays out really quick. This is huge. This is huge. Uh, now, these soils here have a fragile pan about, uh, about two feet below the surface, 20 to 24 inches below the surface. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute but but while we're while we're here, I want to show you what it does to you. Depth of soil two two feet. We talked about three feet over there, right? Here's two two feet. Uh, quarter inch a day, right? Once it canopies, it's close to canopy. Okay. June, July, and August. We're using this much a month. We get about this much rainfall per month. So that's about a three and a half inch deficit, right? So we get, we use seven and a half inches the first month, get four inches, three and a half inch deficit. So we tracked, subtract that from that and we've got this left over. We've got about two inches left over to go into July. When we get into July, uh, we ran out. We got three and a half inch, three, well, three, three point seven five, three and a half inch deficit. We only had an inch and seven five left, so we're, we're short. And we're short in August. Chances of having a really good crop on this soil is not really good. What if you had three inch? What if you had three feet of soil? How much insurance do you have? How, how far would you go? Anybody got a guess? What do we say? We use five inches? I mean, we had a five inch storage, right? You know what we said about five inches? We got two and a half, so we would have about two and almost two and a half to three, to three inches carried over. We'd use the rest of it in July, be short in August, right? So those, we're gonna run out most years on those soils too, but we're gonna run out later. We got more insurance. How deep do you have to go and we talked that's a while ago. How deep do you have to go so that you got a big enough storage capacity that your insurance, how, how deep? Four feet. Four feet minimum. Four feet minimum. Four feet minimum. 
all these soils we talked about, this stuff coming down and blowing these soils, blowing mainly silt loams. Remember we talked just about that going here? It just happened four times, four different times. The last time it happened, it, it, it put about two feet down. Now, it put it on top of an old soil profile. There's already soil there. And where it started, where, where, where the new profile started and the old profile ended, so to speak, the, inter, the interface between those, if I said it right, formed a fragile pan. A cement, aluminum silicate cement that glued this particle to this particle to this particle to this particle and just shut it down. And you can't get roots, you can't get water, hardly anything through that. And look where it is. And it's in a lot of West Kentucky. Almost all the purchase, now in the lower areas where we've got silted in and around the creek bottoms, Kentucky creek bottoms are wonderful. I mean, you can't grow a better crop anywhere else. Tennessee, West Tennessee creek bottoms, those, cause they're still homes. Uh, but uh, on those hillsides, a lot of West Tennessee, Southern Illinois, all those areas I showed you have this part in them, have this in them. We've got, we've got about six inches of topsoil right here, somewhere right there. This is stuff we dug out of here and it's got back on top. This is the real top right here, about six inches. Then we got a subsoil. Now, remember how wet, I mean, how red the soil was over there? What does that mean? What, what does a red soil mean? What does it mean? Iron. And, and what? Drainage. Good drainage. Good drainage. What, is, what does that right there mean? That, that Poor drainage. Yeah. So this is not real good drainage. It's not bad, but it's kind of in between. Uh, other words, a nail rusts, and it's got to have oxygen to rust so it gets red. Right here's the pan, right there. See where that starts right there, right here? See? Now, let me demonstrate. What did I do with my, oh, here it is. Uh, can y'all tell I'm absent-minded, anybody? See that, see that? There it is. It's a, uh, here they go. Uh, so all you got is two feet. That's it. And uh, this right here is four feet, five feet, maybe six feet. Pure soil, cemented together. Silt loam, just like this, good as you can get, cemented together. If we can break that cement, we can change this soil to something totally different. And uh, that's what I'm working with Andy on. Uh, trying to make this, turn this in from a shallow soil to a deeper soil. And I think we can do it. We're beginning to look like we've got a shot at it. Uh, we have found uh, one plant and four compounds that will break it apart. Uh, but the one plant is annual ryegrass and the four compounds you've got to get down through here. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're working with annual ryegrass and seeing if we can leach those four compounds through there. These tassel flies won't bite you. They're after your sweat, uh, and, but they're aggravating as they can be. <laughs> On this right here, you got roots, 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 and no roots down here. It just totally stops. Because I think, the, I think what happens is the roots come down and these gray areas right here, that, those gray areas, water can, can go into those. The only thing is that, that even though you've got these gray areas, see that one plays out right about here? 
these things usually play out, that, this one plays out right there. In other words, you can get some roots down in there, you can get some water down there, but they don't go all the way through. But if you get roots through there, and you get that chemical that it releases, and it releases in that area, then it'll make that place wider. That's my, that's my feelings is what happens. So you, you get decomposition here, and you get decomposition in those gray areas. And everything enlarges a little bit each year, just a little bit each year. It takes a while. I came out here the other day to, to bail this water out. The water was up to the, to the top of the pan. It would not flow out. You get it up to here, it'll flow laterally through this subsoil downhill. The reason you get a seep in these, in these types of things right here is that if you've got two feet of soil here, and down the slope, you've got, it's eroded and you've only got a foot of soil. Then if it's completely full of water here, you've got two feet going through here, down the hill, is everybody with me? And it gets to where there's only one foot, and so you've got two feet of water going through, trying to go through one foot, and it just seeps out. And that's what, that's, that's what happens. Now, if you want to get that seep out in your field, you're only going to tile that one place. You don't tile that place, you tile above it because that's where the water's coming from. You tile above it. There's a guy in Illinois, Southern Illinois. He started raising ryegrass as a cover crop for corn 15 years ago. And uh, he gave me his yields and he's raised it 15 years in a row at corn and ryegrass and he's no-till both of them. And uh, he's raised it 15 years in a row. And when I compared his yields in that one field to the county average of Hamilton County, Illinois, mm -hmm. he started out 15 bushels below the county average. And the last year that he raised it, that I've got records for, he was, 50, he was 40 bushels above the county average. He went from 15 bushels below the county average to 40 bushels above the county average. The county average was 125 bushels per acre and it didn't change it, it went and, and it stayed that way for 15 years. Irrigated or non-irrigated? Non-irrigated. He told me in that field, he says, when I bought that field, it was, er it was eroded pretty badly. And he said that on those side slopes that we talked about where the seeps come out and things like that, he says, mm -hmm. on a dry year, I mm -hmm. couldn't even harvest it. I couldn't get a crop on those slopes. But you can't tell where those slopes are now. So I think that it gets deep enough, even though that I'm not sure it ever break through it. Well, now some of them, you know, if you got a foot or two feet, you might eventually break through it. No, it would never break through here. Is there good soil underneath of it? You say it's you, if you dig deep enough, you'd get to sandstone. Okay. You'd get to sandstone. Okay. When you go back and we get out to that other road and you turn right, and then you get and you see the the large uh, building that we have there, UKREC. You go down a hill; it's a hundred feet drop. The what causes that drop is because and and you'll do that every time that you go from this type of soil to limestone soils. You'll drop about a hundred feet. You go along 6880 from Hopkinsville to Bowling Green, and you'll drive along on that good soil, and there'll be this those high hills off to the left. And that's these types of soils. And the difference is that that's limestone soils. Limestone dissolves, and that's what makes those, and these are sandstone soils, and that sandstone hardly dissolves at all, so it, it hasn't hardly moved. But over centuries of time, that soil has dissolved, and, and uh, that rock has dissolved, and, and the soils are much lower. That's the difference between those two. And that's the reason they don't have a fragile pan over there, because limestone is alkaline. And we use that to raise the pH in our soils and it stays high. And you have to have an acid condition to form this, this right here. So on sandstone soils, uh, you have acid soils and you have acid conditions. So that's the reason it only forms here. And in West Tennessee, it's the same thing. Uh, but those are the two points that I, that I wanted to make. Anybody got any other comments or things you want to make? This hasn't been ideal conditions this morning. Uh, it's been hot and those damn flies have been buzzing around and everything like that. So you guys are really good. I mean, I really appreciate you. You either good actors or, you, or you're really interested and I'm thankful for that. All right. Yeah.
Well, let's let's give Lloyd a hand real quick. Thank you.